but I'm excited for this one. This is a 3D scanner sent to me by Reality. Excited for this because of what it will do for my design process. A lot of my personal projects are janky and one and done, but that's not how design is supposed to work. Having a feedback loop is really important. You want to take lessons learned from early tests and evaluations, wrap that back in the design, adjust the design, and typically the tighter the feedback loop, the better. You need to have that feedback loop, not just for engineering parts, like test the part to failure and then get feedback, but also for things like form and textures and shapes and ergonomics and comfort and space. And so a typical way of moving that feedback loop um, into real life, where you can have feedback in real life, adjust the design, is to CNC your CAD design into a soft material like foam or clay, and then make actual physical adjustments to the clay or the foam because that's the tightest feedback loop ever, it's in real time. Then you can scan the adjustments you've made back to the computer and either hand the surface over to engineering or go around the loop again. And so I have 3D printers. I have the ability to go from computer to real world, but I don't have a way to go back from real world to computer. And that's where this comes in. All right, let's get this thing unboxed. Like usual, they are not going to get a review of this thing um, before it gets posted, so whatever my thoughts are will get posted on the review channel. This is all just leading up to making a better trackball and maybe also a better PlayStation controller grip because neither really fit my hands well. I feel like they're designed for the Japanese market and this tech really lends itself well to ergonomics projects. Dang it, this has enough pieces. I'm actually gonna have to read the instructions. <sighs> All right, so here's the thing set up on its tripod. You can use it in a handheld mode as well that lets you scan bigger objects, but to eliminate kind of the human error because I'm new to this, I'm gonna be using the turntable mode. While the object rotates, two different cameras pick up a light pattern projected on the target from two different angles and then are able to reconstruct the geometry. This differs from the point-based LiDAR scanning of the iPhone Pro and promises an order of magnitude better resolution. I get it wired up and my Mac doesn't recognize it. Ivy only gave me two uh, USB ports and sometimes my hub has issues, so I just grab a Windows computer and decide to use that instead. And boom, on Windows, no issues at all. You select your mode, select brightness, and then preview. You can scan black objects with this and you don't need to use those little stickers that you sometimes see thrown on objects that are being scanned. And you can see I'm doing this in a bright room. It's not very particular about like the lighting conditions. Stop the preview, hit initialize, wait till the plate turns red, hit stop, throw your object back on the plate, hit scan. It takes about 20 seconds and then you can append other scans in other orientations. You can then uh, align the different scans you've done and then the Creality software will automatically clean up your mesh when you export it as an either an OBJ or an STL. As someone who's had to manually clean up point cloud data before, um, I'm pretty grateful it just kind of does that. So it's about five minutes to go from scan to having an OBJ file using this Creality 2 uh, software. This uh, user interface was something they were pretty proud of when they sent me the scanner, and I'd agree, it looks good. So worked pretty well, didn't use any of the advanced features like adding color to your scan, uh, but I don't need that for this use case. So I can then pull the mesh into Fusion 360 and start designing. My Mac only has eight gigs of RAM, so to keep it from throwing an absolute fit, I rebuild the mesh with a slightly lower density. This will uh, reduce some of the detail. So the scan accuracy was 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. Rebuilding the mesh is gonna kinda interfere with that, but at least my computer will be able to actually handle the file. Also, because of the cleanup process done by Creality, I was pretty easily able to convert it into a solid body. I go to the Form tab of Fusion 360, add a little sphere, and then use Edit Form to kind of move that sphere into a rough, uh, palm rest shape. It doesn't need to be perfect right now because I'm going to do a lot of the design in real life. It just needs to be like a rough starting point. I convert this into a solid and then use combine to subtract out the profile of the scanned mouse from this shape for what should be a perfect fit. I got the prototype printed. Let's see if it fits. See if it's comfortable. It fits perfectly, but it is not comfortable. So that means it's time to uh, iterate the design in real time aka smash a bunch of clay onto it until it fits my hand. I really just focused on ergonomics here, not looks. This huge trackball is already the ugliest PC peripheral I've ever seen, and if you're using a trackball, you've already sacrificed everything for ergonomics. So I just purely focused on forming it the best I could to my palm shape. And once that's done, I scan it back into my computer. 
And then once I overlay this scan in Diffusion 360, you can see the gray is my initial design, V1, and then the light blue translucent is the new scan. I rebuild that mesh and simplify it significantly. So I lose some detail, but it makes it smooth because the clay wasn't smooth. And that gives me this, which is the uh, 3D model of that clay that I had. So big shout out to Creality for sending me this scanner. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface on what I'll be able to do with it. I punched some holes in it so that my palm doesn't get sweaty. I've appreciated the perforation on my glorious mouse and wanted to replicate that. Now I've got that part being printed. Time to address the other issue with this trackball, which is that it feels gross. And the internet tells me that if I install ceramic bearings, it'll feel a lot smoother. And honestly, when I bought these little ceramic bearings, I didn't realize that you had to take the entire trackball apart in order to get at them and swap them. But I do that, swap them out, reassemble the whole mouse, and hopefully this was worth it. The 3D print is done, so I alternate between sanding and coats of paint until I'm reasonably happy with it not looking too much like a 3D print. So now it looks good, it's finally comfortable for me, and the question that remains is, what's it like to use, and can you game on it? Gaming trackballs aren't unheard of. Optimum Tech has a good video on one of them, but this one is asymmetrical, so it's more comfortable, and it has a scroll wheel. Also, it's cheaper. Hey. So I've been using this for gaming for like four or five days now. And uh, originally I just went into it for the meme. Um, I thought that I was going to game on a little bit for YouTube, but then mostly just use it for work. Um, but I've been surprised. Um, it's very nice to like uh, chill on the couch and be able to have mouse-like precision. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if I grew up with a controller or like gaming on a computer, um, I probably wouldn't have that opinion, but I'm bad at everything, and um, I grew up on like laptops with touch pads. So using a trackball like with your fingertips actually works quite well for me. If you're going to game on this though, you have to swap the bearing. With gaming, you don't really want to reposition your fingers all the time on the trackball, so you want to crank the sensitivity up. And at max sensitivity with the original bearings, the cursor was just jumping all over the place. So once I swapped that out, I'm able to use max sensitivity. Uh, the other mod was actually surprising as well. So obviously it's more comfortable. It now actually fits my hand. Uh, but what's surprising is that because my palm is supported, I'm much more likely to use uh, two fingers instead of just one. And uh, two fingers works better. So yeah, both mods uh, I think worked quite well. I'll link the file for this down in Thingiverse if you want to download it. And for less crazy people, the PlayStation grip will be linked down there as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and have a good one. Links to the clay I used, the 3D scanner, and the trackball are all in the video description if you want to try a project like this yourself.